Morning guys, it's Tony Paladin and uh, today we're going to do a little bit of work on looking at checkpoints and their importance. The reason for this is that I frequently see that my slightly older athletes, my 16, 17, 18 year olds, guys that are going into opens, pushing for junior world champs, you know, trying to row fast times, but somewhere along the line it ends up being a breakdown. Trying to coach length, rhythm, being dynamic is all important, really, really important. But the most fundamental thing that I see is the lack of checkpoints. Now, basically, what should happen in checkpoints is that it should be the first thing that a rower is taught when they start at the age of 12 or 13. Yet, I frequently see young coaches uh, who coach the younger age groups not really addressing this very, very, very simple element of the rowing stroke. So I'm going to run through a couple of things today and I want to highlight the importance of the checkpoints and their relevance, especially as we start moving up more into high performance rowing. Okay, so just to define the checkpoints, um, in a very, very basic format, we've got checkpoint one. If you look at my body angle, it's approximately one o'clock. So the body swing that I'll talk about is going to be mainly 11 to one. I know other coaches in certain styles like to have more of a 10 to two uh, style of rowing. Uh, for the purposes of my videos, I'm going to shoot everything at 11 to one because I like uh, the prevalence of the body posture. So, okay, in terms of checkpoint one position, we are sitting up nice and tall at the one o'clock position. The handle is finishing about a fist width away from the body. The arms are straight, the wrists are flat. And if I look at my line of sight, it's slightly above the monitor. So basically, my spine is in the most elongated position that it can possibly be. Okay, so from checkpoint one, we then move to checkpoint two. The movement to checkpoint two is really only the arms. That's all it is. There is no movement through the body. So the body stays straight, the legs stay straight, and we then move to the checkpoint two position. Once we've achieved checkpoint two, which is arms straight, body still back, we're going to move over to checkpoint three. Now, uh, checkpoint three doesn't actually exist. Um, a lot of us try to coach checkpoint three, but in reality, it is a very, very uncomfortable position. And when you are rating 32, 34, 36 strokes a minute, you never really get to checkpoint three, uh, which is why there's a teeny weeny little subdivision of a checkpoint called checkpoint three A, which is more or less there. So in reality, although we should be talking about checkpoint three, it's really checkpoint three A. So if you look at the movement, from checkpoint two to three or three A, you'll see that the body swings over and as the body is about to swing over fully, there's a slight pop of the knees. So for the purposes of these discussions, I'm going to omit checkpoint three and refer largely to checkpoint three A. Okay, from checkpoint three A in this position, arms are locked straight, body is over in approximately the 11 o'clock position and the knees are slightly bent. From here, the movement to the catch, or to checkpoint four, as we'll refer to it, is really, really simple. All that happens is that there's a basic bend of the knees. There is nothing else that needs to happen. So if we just run through that position again, we've got our checkpoint one, our checkpoint two, our checkpoint three A, and our checkpoint four. Now, what you'll notice is we've sequenced the recovery, but if you look practically what happens, the exact reverse happens during the drive. So if you look at uh, the drive from checkpoint four, you push down through checkpoint three A, back to checkpoint two, all the way back to checkpoint one, which is effectively going to give you your most effective drive in any case. So just to link it all together, if we go slightly faster through the checkpoints, we've got checkpoint one, two, three A, four, and then back through the reverse. I'm going to string a few strokes together and now what I'd like to do is start talking about a few basic uh, rhythm mistakes that get made uh, by the omission of checkpoints. Okay, so if I just row nice and lightly, <coughs> you'll see that I'm really focusing on going through my checkpoints. If we were to freeze any of these frames, I'm hoping, uh, you'd see that you would catch me going through one, two, three, A and four through my sequence and likewise through the drive. You see that the exact opposite does tend to happen as I push my legs down. The opposite meaning that you're going from four, three, eight, two, and one. Okay, so why are checkpoints relevant? Well, if we were to leave out a checkpoint, let's leave out checkpoint two. 
Okay, so what's going to end up happening is that if we leave out two and we try to go to three, our arms are still sitting over here. We still left out two and we go to the catch. We've got a problem. Let's say we kind of get checkpoint two. We go through three. This I see a lot. Most Neanderthal rows look like this. All good and well. What happens when you get to the catch? Done. Lots of momentum. Now, let's paint a picture. You're racing. 2K trial, everything on the line. You've painted a good picture of going through your checkpoints. Everything is postured up. When you come forward and change direction, it's a very, very simple movement. You'll see it's very accurate, very light on the legs. So when you pick it up, the drive becomes really effective, especially executing the first six inches. If we paint another scenario, check, put, poor checkpointing, body in a bad position. If we assume that I'm a sort of 78 kilogram athlete, um, the upper part of my body from my hips up are probably a good, you know, 40% of that weight. So let's, for argument's sake, say we, we're sitting 35, 40 kilograms of, of, of mass sitting here. If I do not go through checkpoints, what's going to happen? Poof. 35, 40 kilograms going that way. And I'm trying to change direction at the same time. So as I come forward, poof, down, massive momentum change in the legs, destroying. So if we are looking now at the high performance level, if you're sitting, ticking away at about 34 strokes a minute, if you're sitting up nice and tall, the change of direction on the knees is really easy. If you're not sitting up nice and tall and missing out your checkpoints, immediately you can see how much harder my legs have to work to change the momentum around to counteract the weight of my arms and my body. So, lesson one, checkpoints. Guys, super important, the takeaway here, please coach your athletes the checkpoints. One, two, three, three A, four. Groove them. Make sure your athletes are so well understood. They, they understand those movements. They, they dream those movements. So when the time comes to start tr stringing it all together, you can really, really start coaching high-effective, high-performance and fast rowing.